in-game audio to this episode and a little bit of the next one. Ah, well, it sucks, but I did the best that I could at the end. And, well, the good thing about being a pirate is... You just steal stuff. How are you doing? We're back with Nier. Oh, last time we just did a bunch of quests. We did a bunch and a bunch and a bunch of quests. So I'm quickly checking on this dude who never paid us back here. And then we're off to finally do some of the main story. Whoa! Oh, so he didn't screw us over. So we completed that one as well, thank you. So let's go back to the village and oh oopsie, see what our plans are doing. And then we hurry up to Popla to finally get a new main quest in, man. And I know which one it's gonna be. It's going to be the forest. And there's another quest. God damn this game, dude. You looking for a kid who ran away from home? Yeah, sure. There was a strange kid asking people questions earlier. I think he was trying to learn how to get into facade. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Yeah, but later on. Uh? There you are! Finally! So, that's the war. We can accelerate and be a little bit quicker. And he even, even does drift like that. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, camera. Oopsie. So the weird dude is uh, going to facade. Okay, and uh, we need to check on our plants if they grown, and then we're off to Popola to get the next quest. What up? Oh, nothing. Okay, can we? Hey, my most beloved Popo, what is going on? Hmm. Hmm. What's up, Popola? What's oh, up, Popola? Hi. I just got a strange letter in the mail. Yeah, let's see. I guess it's from the forest. Dearest Popola, I hope this letter uh, finds you well. I'm writing in the hopes of bringing to your attention a certain dream issue of concern regarding recent events in Dream, in dream the Village. I was hoping I might be dream able to get your advice dream on the matter. Recently, there have been dream reports, dream dream of certain dream, dream 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 of dream dream dream. Evil dream, 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 empty dream, curse, evil dream, words, dream, and dream, dream, someone, dream, and okay. That is certainly one bizarre piece of writing. Here it is. And hey, there's a world map in the background. I haven't even noticed. That. Who's it from? Who's the it mayor from? of a small village in the forest of myth. It's a wooded area up north. The forest of myth. Mm -hmm. They're usually a bright and cheerful group of people. Something like this is very out of character for them. I have a bad feeling about this. I'll check it out. Uh, you will? But... but what? Don't worry about it. I've got business there anyway. Oh, well, alright. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. The Forest of Myth is to the north. Yeah, I know where it is. It's one passage where we didn't win just now. Alright, Forest of Myth. Here we come. Let's use the war. <laughs> Goodbye, fools. I'm off. Oh, there's another war, and... Well, f*** the loot. We're going right into... The Forest of Myths! Here we go! Okay, now it's open. So, it's okay. It's just in progress of this game. And here we go. So, I can tell you this is going to be a boss fight in a really different way. So, I never actually... It sure is quiet here. Such silence bodes ill. There's trouble on the way. I'm certain of it. You know, a little optimism now and then wouldn't hurt, Vice. <clears throat> Such cheek. Anyway, what I was trying to say, I remember this part, and it is actually, it's a fun idea, although it can really annoy if you don't get it right. So, we have to see if we can make it, okay? 
So first loot all of this. So let's talk to the mayor here. Hello, Beware. sir. Beware. Beware. The words? What do you mean? Contagious words. Contagious, huh? Those who ah, dream. Yeah. Those who dream? Hold a moment. There is a strange new sensation in my mind. Huh? Vice voice grows in a... What? Quizzical way. It is not quizzical. Quizzical, I'm sorry. What's going on? The villager's body shuddered as he slowly opened his eyes. <laughs> so you see what's happening now? They're still talking, but you narrate. And through your narration or through your reading of that, something starts. Perhaps we should start by asking this man. Uh, who are you? Uh, we heard something happened to this village, so we came to see if we could help. But he said, I'm near this is vice. The mayor stared in the advice. You can speak to me. I must have caught you in my dream. In your dream? The mayor explained. In the past weeks, a mysterious oh god, a mysterious disease called the Death Dream had spread across the forest of myth. Those who caught it were cursed to fall asleep and live forever within the world of their own dreams. The village mayor has had determined the Death Dream was spread from person to person by spoken words, but before he could learn more, the disease took him as well. I started stared at the mayor. His mouth twitching slightly. See here. Are you saying that we have been absorbed into your dream? Well, yes. Said the mayor. I think you have. In other words, said the mayor. we've caught the death dream? Before the mayor could confirm his suspicion, Vice exploded with rage. Ridiculous. Preposterous. Completely unfathomable on every conceivable level. I don't even recall falling asleep. I don't recall this part, though, but okay. That's just how the death dream works. Though polite, the mayor was clearly trying to brush aside the book's remarks. My remarks are not to be brushed aside, fool. <laughs> Come on. The mayor twisted his mouth into an embarrassed grimace, the, then quickly changed the, the subject to who Nier had seen and what they had discussed since coming to the village. Something there must have caused you to enter my dream. A certain conversation, a specific word, something. So it begins. Near and Vise racked their brains but could find no easy solution. There were simply too many words to consider, too much random chatter, too many meaningless conversations. Grimoire Vice does not engage in meaningless conversations. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, I love the fourth wall break here. The mere suggestion that Vice choose the, his words carelessly seemed to sting in it his pride. It does not seem to sting my pride, you bloated gasbag of a narrator. Hey, sorry, dude. It has demolished it utterly. Hey, I'm just reading the words. Irritated Vice locked skyward as if searching for answers in the heavens. I was doing looked, no such sorry. thing. Yeah, I, you looked at skyward. Just leave me alone already. The anger created by his harsh words bled over to Neil like a contagion. There you go. Wait, said Neil suddenly. Did someone just say contagion? Yes, I believe so. What of it? Well, that villager told us to watch out for contagious words, right? The mayor leaned forward with renewed interest, pushing a startled wise aside in the process. He must have said something, right? Asked the mayor. Some specific combination of words. What was it? It was about dreaming or something that dreams are... Uh, what the hell was it? A sheep? Cried wise suddenly, blurting out the first thing that pooped into his head. <laughs> Popped into his head, sorry, I just thought it was funny. The others stared at him for a moment before slowly shaking their heads. After a few minutes of thought, Nier's face suddenly lit up. I remember he said, those who dream, that's what he said, I'm sure of it. At this the mayor produced a 
thick sheaf of papers from his pocket, he flipped through them and a few times before finally nodding his approval to Nia. That sounds right, he said. As a stray sheet of paper fluttered to the ground, Manolz also mentioned something about that. I bet it was the last thing you heard before you fell asleep. The mayor shook his head. His worn pencil stopped tracing lines across a lone piece of paper. For the last month, I'm done nothing but study this disease we call the death dream, he said. I mean, I'm the mayor, right? It's a job to protect people from whatever comes along, but I never expected a couple of outsiders to start entering people's dreams. The mayor paused and grimaced crossing his face. I should probably be taking notes for something. Vice immediately fired back. I applaud the force. <laughs> I will. It takes to research a disease in your dreams, he said. But perhaps uh, we should vent your efforts to escaping this place instead of trying to understand it. That's a vice voice, isn't it? The mayor's hand tightened around his pencil, snapping off the tip. I've tried to escape. From the very first moment I realized I was locked inside my own dream I've been looking for a way out, but I don't think it exists. I mean, this is my dream. You are a dream. That's a tech reference. If there was an exit, I know about it. He paused for a moment, his unfocused eyes staring at nothing. My village was beautiful, he said to no one in particular, and it was filled with the most wonderful people you could ever hope to meet, but once the disease took hold, Things change. It's like someone took a sponge and soaked all color out of our lives. I just want us to be whole again. I want us to be free, and I want to stop trying until it I won't stop trying until it happens. Oh, sorry. Near not in agreement. Huh? Wait a second. I did not. Look. If we can be of any help, said Near, just ask. Now hold on. I did not just say that. Oh, silence, Craig Weiss. The grimoire looked from near to the mayor and back again, his face filling with confidence. Grimoire Vice's face is always confident. Thank you very much. Now see here, mayor, you told us that nothing can exist in this dream without your knowing of it. But yet you seem to suppress the, you seem surprised to see us when we first arrived, yes? The mayor slowly raised his head, realizing realization dawning on his face. Oh my god, he said, you're right, you're right. I had no idea you were coming. The human, the human imagination is a limitless engine set by us, and dreams are the fuel. If you can't imagine an exit, then it must be so. With your permission, we shall search it out. Thank you, said the mayor. I don't know how I can repay you. Payment is not required. We are as eager as you to be done with this place. True that. The mayor suddenly felt as if he could breathe again. He'd almost forgotten what it was like. Good luck, you two. He called at the departing forms of Nier and Vice. We're all counting on you. As, as Nier slowly faded into the misty forest, the mayor was struck by a sense of deja vu. I saw this man once before, he thought. But where? Nier's mood darkened as he crashed through the forest. Hours earlier, when the beauty of the place was still a new thing, he'd be confident. They could get in, fight the exit, and be home in time for dinner. Ah, uh, yeah, so as you can see, this is kind of a long progress in the story, but I don't know, I think it's kind of fun that it, from this action roleplay game it turns into this narration. But the deeper they went, the more the forest closed in around him. The mist made it difficult to see more than a foot in any direction, and moss covered rocks seemed determined to twist his ankle. More than once he'd been forced to steady himself on the rough bark of a tree and his hands now left small trails of blood on everything he touched. Additionally, Vice was proving to be a spectacular poor traveling companion, unhindered by either terrain or physical effort he spent most of his time urging you to pick up the pace and crumbling about their slow progress. Sorry. Finally, after Vice muttered something about lagless turtles being more adept of navigating the environment, near snap. Okay, Vice, grab it for a second, would you? You don't have to walk. Nier leaned against a tree and tried to stretch the knots from his back. How can the stupid forest be so big, he muttered to himself. The moment the, moment the words tumbled from his mouth, a uh, cacophony. A what? Cacophony. 
of insects sprang to life. Every imaginable form of buzz, click and hiss brought out a volume that rattled his teeth. He slapped his hands over his ears and screamed to be heard. Vice, what's going on? You could see by his mouth moving, but he might as well have been shouting in a tornado. The insects screamed, the forest howled, and then, just as his ears seemed ready to tear from his head and go running for cover, the sound diminished. Hesitantly, he removed the hand from his left ear and listened to the creatures of the woods. Sree, sree, sree. Shak, shak, shak. Cheek, cheek, cheek. Huma, huma, huma. Cheek, 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 cheek. Okay, as the insect simply dimmed another decibel, Nier began to detect patterns in the sound. This isn't random, he thought. It's just white noise. It's something else. The insects were just calling out. They were asking a question. One with it is lagging. Two with it is ideal. Three with it is dangerous. What is it? On my pages is a riddle. I guess so. I mean, it feels sort of forced, but maybe it's the tea getting out of this place. Then I leave it to you to answer. One with it is lacking. Two with it is ideal. Three with it is dangerous. What is it? A secret? A seesaw? Should I know? Two with it is ideal. Like for a secret, right? Sender and return. Yeah, I guess it's a secret. Wait, inward clue is that Vice left the task with near side and gave the only answer that made sense. It's a secret. Alright. The sound of the insect stopped as suddenly as it began. The forest undergrowth parted before the or was a rippling wave opening a new path. Vice, you dumbass! Yeah, Kaini, I'm in the middle of something here, okay? These forest anthropods are making a road for us, said Vice with glee. Please that passing the test near moved on with the with new intensity. The pass offered his body relief from the undergrowth, but gave even greater cheer to his mind as long as they were on a path, the journey had a purpose. I guess the forest has accepted us, uh huh? said Near after a bit. Boy spun around to face his companion. Do not mistake the will of this forest for some happy path you can suddenly befriend. We have no idea where this path leads. He's ready. As Vice finished speaking, Kani, I'm doing a thing here, okay? As Vice finished speaking, the pair turned a corner and found themselves facing a clear forest spring. Smiling, he picked up a small rock and sent it skipping across the surface of the water. Good heavens, said Vice. His surprise was understandable. Each time the rock struck the face, the surface of the water, a musical note rang out. When the rock finally stopped moving and sank to the bottom of the spring, the ripples it left behind came together to form words. I enter through the winter, but break no glass. When night falls, I vanish. What am I? The sun. Absurdly easy, break wise. Now answer it. Nick grit his teeth, tried to reach out and strangle his companion. <laughs> He's right after all. This one is pretty easy. I entered through the window, but break no glass. When night falls, I vanish. What am I? Sunlight. Sunlight. A plum of water suddenly burst from the spring. Sunlight filtered through the trees and reflected of the plume, creating a shimmering rainbow that spanned the entire horizon. In all my years, said Vice softly, I've never seen such a sight. Perhaps I've misunderstood the intentions of this place. Hey, look, cried near. Cried near? Waking voice from his days. There's a house or something over there. Glancing in the direction of the, his friend's extended hand, Vice saw a small cottage nestled among the trees. That's weird, isn't it, Vice? I mean, how, uh, who would build a house all the way out here? He walked over and pounded on the door. After a minute of solid banging, the door cracked open and a small man peered out. His body was cloaked from neck to toe in a large black cape, while his face was obscured by mist. Um, began near, but before he could get any further, the cloaked man held a hand up and began speaking. I have four legs, in the morning and two at noon, but end the night with three. three. Sorry, what am I? He tried to ask the cloaked man who he was and what he's doing there, but he simply repeated the question. If we wish to engage with this man, uh, this man in conversation, said Wes, it seems we must 
answer this riddle? Yeah, I suppose, said Nier. Well, at least it's an easy one. I have four legs in the morning and two at noon, but end the night with three. What am I? A man, a demon, or an angel? A man, I guess, right? A man. The mist dissolved from a cloak, figured as he spoke a single word. Correct. Oh, okay. With that, the man flung his garment aside, revealing his true identity. You're the mayor, cried Nier. Cried? Why did he cry, though? The small man slowly shook his head. I am not the mayor, no. Now listen to my words. Long ago, I saw a version of you that was not yourself. What's that mean? I will make sense in time. Uh, at present, I simply grad congratulate you on cracking the seal of the death dream. How? Now you must go to the person at the forest entrance. With that, the man turned on his heel and slapped the door behind him. As near watch, mist seeped up from the ground and enveloped the cottage, erasing it from its existence. When Nier and Vice returned to the forest entrance, they found the mayor leaning against a tree. As soon as he caught sight of the duo, he sprang to his feet and scrambled over them. Over to them. Good gravy, he cried. You made it, you actually made it back. His left hand grasped Nier's and pumped it so fiercely it threatened to dislodge from the socket, while his right seized, vice by the cover and swung through the air. Gah! But I haven't stopped shaking, you fool. We have not even told you if you were successful or not. The mayor smiled broadly and shook his head. I'm just happy you're alive. I didn't think I'd ever see you again. Nier withdrew himself from the mayor's eager handshake with a slight smile. We broke the death dream seal, he said. At least I think we did. The mayor's face beamed as Nier filled him with details. When the tale was done, the tree. Ah. Oh. When the day was done, the three of them laid down on the forest ground and fell asleep. Nier cooked his head. Okay, hang on a second. This is crazy. Why would we just lay down and go to sleep? Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, um, Cease. Endless travel and go to sleep, fool. Fighting against the rules of this place is futility itself. Nier and the mayor obediently reclined atop the crazy earth. Have you forgotten, contain continued wise? It is words that control the death ring, words that allow us to move from place to place. No matter how unnatural they seem, the words are absolute. Therefore, if the words tell us to sleep, then sleep we shall. And once we do, the story will continue. With that, the tree you found their eyes growing heavy, their breathing slowly, slowly. It's the first time again, a man, the, the first time I felt tired since I was imprisoned here. His words were cut off by a loud, long yawn and remembered nothing more. They might have slept for an hour or a year. When they awoke, things had a slightly more real quality to them. The mist felt thicker, the leaves greener, and it was clear that they had awakened from their dream. He shook the mayor's shoulder gently. Good news, he said. I think we made it. Oh wow, said the mayor in an odd voice. We did, I'm back. He blinked once and then again as if not quite believing the sight before him. You two have no idea how much this means. Death dream was spreading through our village and I wanted to, well, I thought I could figure out how to stop it, but I guess that wasn't the case. I must have caught the disease and become trapped in my own dream. The mayor started to stand, then collapsed back to the earth. He stared at his legs and as if he was trying to remember how they worked. They glanced at Nier and shrugged. Without a word, the young man reached down and pulled the mayor to his feet. Real life may take some getting used to, said mayor. Rise, my crossed lips. You shall relearn in short order, I'm sure, said Weiss. For now, you should return to your home and rest. No, said the mayor, swaying on unsteady feet. No, I can't. Some of the villagers are still trapped in death dreams. I have to save them. The man slowly made his way to the divine tree in the center of the village, then bowed his head and prayed silently. This is a holy tree, he explained when the prayer was finished. It's the guardian of our village history and memory. Dude, this story is taking way too long. Superstition will only make our mission harder, Mother advice. We should not put our faith into the gods. The mayor shook his head. Not the gods, the works. Legend says 
that our tree is home to a powerful magic known as a sealed verse. Okay, near and Vice couldn't contain their surprise. It seemed the gold had been found in the most unexpected of places. I say, Mar advice, this is certainly a stroke of luck. As the tree of them said there uh, as the tree of them as uh, sorry for flip's sake, as the three of them said their, uh, their goodbyes, near mentioned the strange man who had given them the third riddle and the mysterious words he had left them with. I once saw a version of you that was not yourself, muttered the mayor. What in the world does that mean? Lost in thought, he stared into space for a long moment. You know, he said softly, this is going to sound odd, but I had a feeling I'd seen you before too. He had tried to keep a straight face and failed, but the mayor didn't seem to notice. Deja vu, right? Anyway, I figured it's just some kind of illusion created with created by the death dream. Oh, my reading is terrible. It probably doesn't mean anything. He gave the mayor a nod and a smile, but inwardly his thoughts were racing. There's something wrong about the mayor and his words. And what exactly is going on here? That riddle would prove to be the most difficult oh, one of thank all. thank you so much. Now I can finally return to a normal life. This is one of the most bizarre diseases I have ever encountered. I know. That's why we have to help the other villagers, no matter what. Obtained sealed verse, obtained dark execution. I think that was a good one, right? Summon magical spikes, yeah, from the ground to impale enemies, charge to increase the numbers of spikes. Yeah, that was a good one. For a sealed verse, that didn't take much effort. Well, yes, all a touch too easy, if you ask me. It's almost as if someone was guiding us to this village. Don't overthink advice. Uh oh. Ah, uh, goddammit. Okay, let's do this. Hope you're doing fine, and we're off. This person must be dreaming too. It yeah, should sure. appear that way, yes. Damn it. Can't say I'm very excited to go back there. That dream world sorta of creeps me out. Perhaps you should spend less time complaining and more time getting on with the mission. Yeah, yeah. I breathe air, scented with death, and resist the urge to laugh, for I know it will sound like the words of a madman. How long have I been in this fresh hell? My box, my prison is tucked beneath a stairway in the long unused catacombs of some infinite castle outside. I hear the sounds of a funeral dirge that plays without end. Light has no place here, wind is a forgotten friend, I pray for death to come, but he forsakes me. Time passes and eternity slips by in a single tick of the clock. Someone knocks on my prison, anyone there? I hear an, an unfamiliar voice say, my savior. I claw at the door of my jail, bedding thick splinters under my wrecked nails. I scream for help, I laugh, I sob. Surely this is a product of my adult mind. Surely it can't be true. Uh, help me, I cry. For the love of all the gods, help me. Impossible, I can hear sounds of a lock being turned out and falling on the floor as the door slowly creaks open. I have just enough time to see a silver-haired boy and a floating boat before the light pours inside. My eyes accustomed to the blackness explode with pain and I'm forced to turn away. Who are you? I ask, shaking hands covering my face. What? How have you come to this place? I'm Grimo Wise, this is near. Long we have been searching for you. Now come, stand. We shall awaken from this nightmare together. The one known as Nier extended his hand and pulled me from the cell. Though my eyes are slow to adjust to freedom, my ears are keen as ever. Ever. <laughs> and they recognize the staccato sound of heavy pain. Great. <laughs> oh my god. I'm blind for words right now. I can't even. I never thought to hear that again, I whispered. Would that. If this were not such a terrible storm, said Grandma Wise. Look at your feet. I force my eyes open and see water pooling around my ankles and lapping at my shins. 
There's so much of it. Yes, and more comes each long delay. We do not make it good our escape. We shall all down in this castle. We know you're weak, but you are our only hope to survive this place. Time that long forgotten friend made itself known again. I nodded in my head and swore to save my rescue no matter the cost. The castle catacombs are a maze, twisting upon themselves like the ambles and trails of a giant. I swing down the dim corridors and proceed north. At the end of the corridor, I find a row of 20 gorgeous canopied beds resting atop a carpet of velvet. All are covered in a thick layer of dust and cobwebs. Are we supposed to go to sleep? Searching for the door, to the next room I come upon a shapeless mass of grey matter. It has been shoved against the side of the wall and despite my fever, I think I see the outlines of the door just beyond. When I reach out a finger and touch a piece of the mass, it turns to dust and drifts away from the wind. Realization slowly dawns and I fall to my knees and weep. Corpses! I face a mountain of charred and crumpled corpses. Well, that was random. Uh, I look from it to the bats and back again until the horror dawns full upon me. Someone has piled these bodies into a tower and set them ablaze. Whether they were alive or dead, I don't know, and sanity will not permit me to consider the proposition further. I make a sound, whether scream or laugh, I cannot be certain. Then my mind grants me merciful blackness, and I find myself opening the door and leaving that most terrible of rooms. I squint down the dim corridors and proceed east or south. Well, we went north, so it wouldn't make any logic to go south, right? I squint down the dim corridors and proceed, well, further to the north. I squint down the dim corridors and go, well, let's go to the west then. At the end of the path, a row of heavy wooden cars lie on their sides in a dark chamber, doubtless they were filled with wine. My thirst roars to life, I cannot remember the last time my parched throat had relieved. I scrambled to the first cask and pulled frantically at the corner. The theft of a few cups means nothing, I tell myself. The cask will be ruined by the flood regardlessly. Finally, the cocks are reckless to my attack and thick red liquid bursts from the hole. This is no wine, it's blood still warm from the body, whether animal or something, I can't say. Foul liquid soon mixes with the rising flood waters, creating a warmth that laps against my thighs. By all the, go by all the gods, ah, uh, the rest of these casts fill for blood as well. I lack the courage to confirm my suspicion, disgust and it becomes fear as I turn to flee, but my weakened legs betray me, sending me toddling over into the red ocean below. The smell of death is everywhere. It threatens to consume me. I must escape this hell. Crawling on all fours like an animal holding back screams lest any foulness enter my mouth, I lurch forward through the wet waters out of the room to freedom. I squint down the dim corridor and proceed east. I squint down the dim corridor and proceed north. At the end of the path, the water rises to my waist, exhausting me both physically and spiritually. I pray. I don't know which direction, I don't know if it doesn't make a difference, if it makes a difference, I don't know. I pray that this is the way out. Eventually, I can stand the side of the waters no longer and so turn my eyes upward. Imagine my surprise when I see a series of paintings hanging on the faded plaster wall. Each depicts a person in the prime of life clad on clothing of the highest quality. The styles, however, are strange to me leading me to believe that these people have lived long, long ago. One subject wears an outfit that particularly catches my eye. It is constructed of a thin, greasy cloth and decorated with a motive of flowers and birds, while encircling the figure's waist is a leather belt of the most perfect construction. It is stunning costume even by modern standards. As I gaze at the portrait, I'm struck by a desire to touch it with my own hands. Yet, uh, as I extend a single finger to the painting, I'm gripped by the most unpleasant feelings. Staring closely at the image, I see it bend and warp into the shape of another figure. Finger, sorry. Something behind the picture is pointing at me. Is it another prisoner? 
a family matriarch for eternity in this place, I cannot let it pass, and so I seize the portrait with both my hands and throw it into the water. The wall is hollow behind the painting, and inside I can just make out a body. Whether or not this is a prison on there would be no rescue. The poor soul is long there. Scraps of clothing lie on the floor around the bones. Only a small wall of fabric has survived, but it features the same delicate designs that were depicted in a portrait. I have been admiring a row of corpses blocked from view by portraits of each victim of their pinnacle. Enough shielding my eyes, I pedal forward through the water. I squint down the corridor and proceed south. I don't know, let's just go south then. Then go west. The water has risen to my chin and now let's greatly at my lap. <laughs> no, it's you dumb bastard that shouts near. He surely desired to say more, but the rest of this insult is cut short by the rising water. Grandma Wise, wet and tattered, floats on the water's surface. It's already too late for him. This wasn't, this wasn't how it's supposed to end. Oh my god, no. I have to do this shit again? Oh no. Oh man, that's... Shut up, just, just go in, okay, just do it. Blah, 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 blah. So I don't know where to go, man. I proceed north. So I guess north is our direction. I proceed east. I proceed north. I proceed east. Oh shit, I just skipped something. Do we have to go east or not? Where do we need to go, man? I don't get it. I squint down the dim corridors and proceed, I guess, north. I don't know. Where's the hint? Do you have anything to say about that? Ah, hopefully there that's... will be no labyrinth next time. I hear that. Yeah. Dude, that sucked big time. Oh man, now we have to do this <laughs> right? And another victim. This work certainly is trying. This episode will be the most boring episode ever, man. I think that the story isn't that bad, but it's not really entertaining, though, this I point I figured now. a book like you would be into all this word stuff, Vice. <laughs> Good one. Even I have my exceptions. Oh, just let me grab a cigarette. Alright, here we go again. A colony of massive sculptures was visible in the distance. Their tall forms scraping against the sky. Vice and Ear had never, <coughs> sorry, never seen such a sight, and their eyes widened as they tried to take it in. As Vice considered his answer, the sun beat down on them with renewed ferocity. Under this heat, a mirage or two would hardly be an unexpected sight. Near not even wiped the sweat of his brow, leaving a trail of sand in its place. He thought he'd never been so thirsty. The ancient road on which they walked was black and cracked with age. Here and there, thin wisps of grass pushed up through the rocky surface, as if defying those who had laid this material down over their home. The heat reflecting from the rope made Neil lightheaded. His feet hurt and he crouched down to rest. I don't know how much longer I can do this. Someone playing a joke on us or what? Yeah, it kind of, kind of feels like that, man. The developers, man, that's, that's a, I mean, it's different, okay? The complaining had already begun. Vice tried not to let his eyes roll too much, a joke, he said. No, no joke, this road leads to the city of art. Perhaps, <laughs> I get it, good one. Perhaps the path itself is simply some manner of grand artistic work. You don't sound very sure of yourself there. Perhaps not, but thinking of it in this way might make it easier for you to bear. Nick glanced at his grinning face, shook his head and resumed walking. As the time passed, Nia's feet grew more painful and his throat drier than he thought possible. Than he thought possible. He tried not to look for it further than the next step ahead because the bright sunlight made him hesitant. So trust his own senses. We're definitely getting closer, said Wise in an effort to cheer his companion. Yes, this much is certain. Encouraged, Neil lifted his gaze. Suddenly he stopped walking, choosing instead to stand in the middle of the road with his mouth and eyes wide open and his finger pointing in the distance. Water, he cried, it's water. 
water? asked Quax. Monstrous, I don't see any water. Over there, just ahead of us, look, the sun is reflecting of it. Without waiting for a response, Nir sprang the light and bounded toward the side. What in the... There was no water, there was nothing but sand in, the every, in every direction. That also reminds me of Nir Automata, right? The big desert? He closed his eyes and sighed as Vice floated up behind him and chuckled softly. I believe this is known as a mirage, he said. Many a desert traveler has spoken of such thing. He shook his head bewildered. Suddenly he pointed off into the distance. In the distance, his eyes wide once more. Wait, there is it. Just miss and look, it's right there. He sprinted up again, leaving White with no choice to follow. After a few minutes of running, Nick came to a halt. I could have sworn it was right around here. Confused, he put his hand up to his eye and rubbed them vigorously. As soon as he stopped, he noticed a blue shimmering pool of clear water just over the next rise. With a shout, he bounded off in search of it. The chase continued for nearly an hour until an exasperated vice finally floated up to near and struck him in the face with his car. Enough, you blithering idiot. Stop this at once. There is no water here. <laughs> Neil's face clouded. There isn't? There's not, and perhaps next time you will listen to me when I tell you as much. Wise paused for a moment and continued speaking in a slightly kinder tone. However, I suppose this mad chase was not altogether wasted. It seems we have arrived in the city of art. He looked up, stretched out before him was a row of impossible tall sculptures. The journey was at the end, an end. They're huge, cried Nier, completely forgetting the beat and pain in the past few hours. I've never seen anything so big. Each sculpture was formed from roughly the same shape, a tall rectangle that stretched up toward the sky. But that is where the similarities ended. Most were covered with panes of glass that reflected light in a thousand directions, where others seemed to be nothing but frames of steel. That sounds like the end city from the automata. Weird. Some had tall spires on their tops, while others possessed triangular capes. What kind of city is this? said Nier. Where are the people? Where are the houses? Perhaps the land is intended exclusively for artistic use. <sighs> the debate continued as they made their way through the city. Miracles of artistry were everywhere. Great iron crates with wheels set silent and steel rails, beautifully carved works with light of red, amber and green dangled over every street. As they moved away from the mass of sculptures, they found a great array of small ones. Some were covered in glass or brick, but many were composed of materials they had never before encountered. The shiver, the shiver variety of colors and styles was staggering. Unable to find a theme or purpose to the abstract works around them, Nier and Vice eventually fell silent. On the outskirts of the city, they discovered three sculptures in shape of humans. Nier uttered a sigh of relief as he approached them. Finally, I was getting tired of modern art. The three statues were indistinguishable, except for a single word, chisel into their right arms. One red alpha, one red beta, and the final red gamma. Oh, I guess we need to remember that. Alpha, beta, and gamma. As they are moved to touch the nearest statue, a bird flew from the top of one of the sculptures, alighting on the sculpture's shoulder. It emitted a brief, beautiful song that took the form of words. Only one form is real, the others are false. The real form will always speak the truth. The false ones will always only speak lies. With that, the bird departed, as if one cue the three statues shared life, acquiring color and form as they begin to breathe. Hey, look at that, said Nia. They're alive. The triplets bowed low before Nia. Please, said Alpha, you have to get me out of this nightmare. I am real. Stop lying, said Beta. He turned to Nia and threw his hand in the air. Alpha's fake. You know, I'm the real one. What a load of crap, said Gamma. Beta is fake. Everyone knows I'm the only real one around. Their respective pleas given the three statues return to their frozen state. A silence once again enveloped the city. When you consider all the statements, only one of them could be the real thing, said Vice. Nia Farrell his eyebrows and considered his answer. Only one form is real. 
others are false. The real form will always speak the truth. Osborne will only speak lies. <sighs> the real one is better. Though near voice betrayed a notable lack of confidence, <laughs> he was relieved to see Vice nodding at him. If Alpha were telling the truth again, Vice in the dry tones of a lecturer, Beta and Gamma would be fakes. But in that case, Gamma's claim that Beta is fake would be the truth, even though Gamma is a liar. Therefore, the theory crumbles. Ah, oh, now I get it. Now, let us presume that Gamma spoke the truth. That makes Alpha and Beta liars. In this situation, however, Beta is calling Alpha a liar, which would leave us with two statues telling the truth. Finally, let us assume that Beta is telling the truth. If so, Alpha and Gamma lies would make sense, therefore Beta must be real. As Vice finished his explanation, Alpha and Gamma crumbled soundlessly into the dusk. While Beta sprang to life once more, congratulations, villagers said Vice in a cheerful voice. The time to awaken has arrived. Thank you for saving me, cried the villager. He dropped to his knees and bowed his head as low as he could. Go before an uncomfortable near pulled him to his feet. Why did you have a dream like this? asked Vice. Have you been to the city before? The villager slowly looked around and the bizarre objects and sculptures that dotted the landscape then shook his head. I don't think so. I mean, it's possible, right? There's no way I could have ever been to a place like this. But at the same time, I feel like I've seen it before. Deja vu, muttered Nier, just like the mayor. The vague sense of unease that struck Nier during the mayor's dream spread once more through his mind. That was rough. Yeah. I am positive I have seen that place before. Before? Okay, that's enough. Don't need you getting all weird on me too. Oh, wait, was it the city in the beginning? The tall rectangular buildings? Is it that what they mean? Okay, there. Now all the villagers can wake up, right? Yeah. Yes, if the mayor's assumption was correct. Yeah. I think I have had enough wordplay to last a lifetime. Thank you very much. Indeed. <sighs> You're telling me. Anyway, let's go see the mayor. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, okay, Kaiser Kodan, here we are. I did the mayor, I did the two villagers. I hope now that when we talk to the mayor, this part of the game will end by that. I'm so sorry about my bad English and my bad reading and I'm really trying hard, but damn, that was a lot of... I think I just have to talk to him. Oh, how wonderful. Thank you so much. Here, I have something for you. Take the one-handed sword, Faith. Wow, this looks valuable. I can really have it? Of course. It's apparently a weapon of some renown, but we have little use for it. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you again. For everything. Yeah, go flip yourself. If you ever get caught in a dream again, bad luck, dude. Whoo, we did it! Alright, guys. I'm ending this episode here, okay? That was cruel. That was a really cruel episode and I'm really sorry, but it's part of the game. And even though it's a little bit boring, it's... Yeah, it's kind of artistic, okay? So, if you want to become a Nakama and join the Kaiser Kodan, subscribe and if you liked it, leave a like and if you don't liked it, I kind of can't understand that. No matter. Thank you for watching, if you watch. So, goodbye.